Welcome back to another installment of Facilitation Fridays. I'm going to talk to you today about what happened yesterday in a music therapy group that I was running. And I decided to focus on some drumming and singing because the people in my group often need to um, do something physical and, you, you know, using fine and gross motor skills and also work on their voice projection, work on their breathing, um, and also work on cognition via learning a song, remembering lyrics, uh, remembering a form, like a basic form, and that kind of thing. But since this is about facilitation and not so much about teaching, I want to just relate this to something that one of the participants in my group said to me about midway through the group. And we had been doing music for about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, and I like to just do the music, layer in information, but not stop and start and stop and start. So we had been playing for a while. And we're drumming and they're getting to choose what they want to do and how they want to play. And I'm kind of providing just the foundation, you know, the basic skeleton for the music. And when we finished, he said, wow, that was great. And I said, what was great about it? And he basically said that a lot of the time, especially in treatment, and you can understand this and appreciate it, he said that a lot of the time we're doing things, but we don't get to decide how we do them. And we don't really get to do anything expressive or fun or flexible. We're just told to basically narrow and narrow and narrow down our behavior until it's exactly what somebody else wants it to be. And what he, what he said to me was, what I liked about this is that we got to go out and we got to expand and we got to do different things the way we wanted to do it. And he said, and that was amazing. That was really fun. So I totally got that, right? And that's one of the things I love about music therapy uh, where we get to help people with physical, with speech, with cognition, and the emotional aspect. And this, I think, speaks to the reason we have this tool called music, and we have a profession called music therapy. And I'm not always wearing my music therapy hat when I do music, but often I am. Uh, and in this case, I was. Uh, but I, I just hope you can appreciate that even though we're doing music, right? And even though it might look like we're just doing, you know, drumming or a song, uh, there's a lot of layers to this. There's a lot of things going on. And that's really one of the reasons we use music, um, not just because of the things I just mentioned, but also because of what he said, which was the psychological component and that it, in as much as that it's motivational and it's fun and people like to do it. So it's not that music therapy does, you know, speech and physical things better than speech therapy and physical therapy. Of course, those are wonderful and they focus on certain areas. But for somebody in treatment who's feeling uh, depleted and restricted and who wants to get back to his regular life, um, if I can come into a place and facilitate a process that doesn't feel like work, that actually feels expansive and expressive and joyful, then that's good. That's a good thing. Um, of course, as his therapist, I'm always keeping my eye on what is he doing? How is he doing it? Are we reaching some objectives? Uh, am I helping him? because that's my job, to help him, not to entertain him, not to help him feel good, not to help him have fun even. Uh, if he does have fun, that's great, but my job is to help him spend less time in therapy. And we talked about that at the end, uh, how actually success for me in that setting means I don't get to see him anymore, <laughs> and he doesn't see me. But if that's happening, if somebody moves on and moves out of therapy, that's actually something to be celebrated. So within the context of facilitation, I want to just point out that some of the things that I was doing was, was actually not doing too much, 
Um, I try to not do too many prompts. I try to not give too much information. I try not to talk while we're doing music. Uh, if you're a music facilitator, I encourage you to, uh, once the music starts, to just keep it musical, stay in the music, and don't talk over the music, especially when people are drumming because they, it's hard for them to hear you. Uh, but I feel like, and this is just my opinion, when we enter into a musical experience, we're using uh, a different way of processing. And I'm not going to say left and right brain because that's actually been largely disproven as a theory. But let's just say we're using our musical self, our creative self, our artistic self, our subconscious self to a degree, um, that kind of expansive, joyous place that we can get to when we're making art. And when somebody, teacher, facilitator, therapist, starts talking, people have to shift away from that other place they're in, and they have to listen to and decode information. And I feel like that really pulls people out of, or can pull people away from the musical place that they're in. And I want my clients to be in that musical place because that's the place that is motivational and fun and expansive and joyful. Does that make sense? So I give instructions in between the music. So we'll, you know, we'll pause and I'll blah, 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 blah. I'll say some things and then we'll do music again. And I might give little prompts during the music like, okay, one more time, or let's go to the second section, or I'll just say second part or first part, just to give them a heads up. Sometimes I don't even do that, I just do it. And then because it's music, and because they've heard it before, um, I can just shift and do something and they, they get it because they they've heard it and it's familiar. So those are the two things. One, just an appreciation for the power of music, uh, the, the power that you have as a music facilitator to give people or to, to uh, present an experience uh, just by providing a structure and then allowing people to have their own experience within that structure. And I think that's really powerful and it's a great thing to do, whether you're doing it recreationally or it's an educational setting or it's a therapy setting like I was in. Uh, and then secondly, uh, we can help do that. We can help keep people in the music by not giving instructions too much or at all, uh, while the music is happening. And that's something I try to, I've been trying to reduce that in my own facilitation. And um, yeah, I hope you have a chance to work on that as well in yours. And yeah, that's it. That's what I have for you guys today. I hope that's helpful. If you'd like to leave some comments below related to the topic, uh, please do. Uh, let me know what you think, if you have any experience with this kind of thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's great. If you're not a subscriber, please do. And thumbs up, go to the Patreon site and support us if you like this content. I'm Kalani Das, and I want to thank you for joining me at World Drum Club.